Hey good people and welcome to my channel. Today is Friday, but for me it's been a week from YouTube hell and I'll explain why. The past 100 plus videos that I post on YouTube have been on my computer while using Windows Movie Maker. And for those who've never heard of Windows Movie Maker, the program is a blessing and a curse in that it's very user friendly, but it also has issues with lagging and exporting videos. Well, this past week, I've been having issues with my video editor lagging and exporting videos. This was the reason why I missed posting Wednesday's video, which was 33 minutes in length. I thought the issue would have been solved by now, but it's still ongoing. So I'm creating this video on my phone, which will be an abridged version of my Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 8 rewrite. I will share all the main points, as well as the direction which I intended the story to go. The video won't be flashy at all, but it will be interesting nonetheless. So if you're ready for the long night, then here it goes. The episode begins with a flashback scene in the land of Mir. We learn that Varys is the bastard son of a slave and the ruler of Lys, and a sorcerer who is a follower of the Lord of the Light wants to use his blood magic to gain power and influence for himself. We see the actual events of how Varys got cut and his parts being thrown in the fire. The sorcerer then says, Valar Magulis, to which the flame replies, Valar Dahares, for the night is dark and full of terror. The episode then takes us to present time, where Westeros has been a week into the long night and Varys is awaiting his execution. Tyrion meets Varys. They have a conversation about their friendship and Varys' betrayal. Varys talks about being the best spy master in the world but even with his knowledge, he underestimated the Red Women manipulating Danny to do their dirty work. Varys warns Tyrion to leave Westeros if the Night King is defeated, but he doesn't say why. When it's time to execute Varys, he tells Danny that he doesn't regret anything that he did. Danny orders Drogon to set fire on him, and Varys dies. The Red Women chant a spell, which causes some of the snow outside to stop and the ice to melt. Witnessing the power of the Red Women was inspiring to everyone there. Everyone except Tyrion, Jon, Ser Davos, and Missande. Tyrion takes this the hardest as he returns to drinking. Bran summons everyone for a meeting and shares that the Night King is less than a week away. Everyone looks to Tyrion to come up with a battle strategy to defend Riverrun, but Tyrion has completely shut down. We go to Harrenhal where the Hound and Arya, who still disguised as Cersei, have made camp. They want to make it to River Run in time, but the war elephants have slowed down their progress. A day into their camp at Heron Hall, they spot whites and white walkers coming from the east. They engage in battle with them and are successful, but they lose a number of war elephants in the process. Back at River Run, John and Danny talk with Tyrion about his drinking. Tyrion shares the story of why he killed his father, how he's been the most oppressed of his life, and why Varys' execution was his breaking point. Tyrion also shares that he's a Targaryen. Danny and Jon are in shock, but Jon gives Tyrion words of encouragement when they're talking about the future of Westeros. Tyrion helps plan the defenses of Riverrun and comes up with a plan to keep the Night King's forces divided for as long as he can. Back at Heron Hall, Arya and the Hound decide to leave the castle after seeing thousands of additional whites slowly coming from the east. Several days pass and we finally see the Night King arriving at Riverrun with his forces from the south and southeast. His army is about a 400,000 soldiers strong. As the fighting starts, the Riverrun forces are initially successful at dividing the Night King's forces, but an ice spear injures Rhaegal, causing him to crash to the ground. The Night King uses his powers of weather manipulation to create an ice storm over Rhaegal, freezing the dragon completely. Drogon witnesses this and goes AWOL. The same ice storm wipes out most of the Dothraki and the Knights of the Vale, who retreat south to escape the threat. The Night King then walks over to the river, puts his hand in the water and freezes a large portion of the water, creating an ice bridge for his army to regroup. The Night King then tries to raise the fallen soldiers to join his army, but he realizes that he has drained his special powers and he can only recoup them with time. Many heroes fall during this time. Tormund, Howland Reed, Brienne, Podrick and Lord Robin all meet their end at this time. Ghost is seen trying to attack the Night King head on, but the Night King chops him down, executing Ghost as John watches from 50 yards away. John is legitimately scared and orders a retreat amidst the madness. 
The fiery hand stands out and sacrifices themselves so that most of the soldiers can make their way back into River Run. Danny, who is very emotional over losing her two dragons, approaches the Red Women, who ask her if she's willing to do anything to win the war. She says yes and provides her unsullied soldiers to the Red Women. The Red Women capture Gendry, who was then sacrificed. Gendry's death causes the ice bridge outside of River Run to instantly melt. Bran sees that the hope inside River Run is failing and he goes into warging mode. Hours pass and soldiers standing on the walls of River Run see ships traveling down the Tumblestone River. These ships are seen shooting explosive cannonballs at the army of the dead surrounding River Run. We also see dozens of bears and wolves, mainly Nymeria and her wolf pack, arriving in the area and attacking the Night King soldiers. Bran is controlling all of these animals with his working abilities. During this time, Sir Davos finds Gendry's mutilated body and knows that only one person in there is responsible for it. Sir Davos informs John what happened and John brings the news to Danny. There is an intense standoff with Danny and John, and John tells Danny in front of everyone that she is no longer fit to lead Westeros, and that he will lead them from now on. This causes Danny to go mad and try to attack John with her sword. John pulls out his sword to defend himself and instinctually stabs Danny in the heart. Everyone at River Run is in shock as John pulls a sword out of Danny's body and it is now engulfed in flames. The Red Women start to chant a spell and a spirit enters John's body. It is the spirit of Azora High. John's eyes turn bright red and he rallies his followers to send the dead back to hell. The drawbridge to River Run is lowered and John and his followers kill scores of whites. John now has special powers. He can manipulate the weather to make the weather warmer outside within a five mile radius. He can also raise the dead of anyone that died during the battle, to which he does. All of our fallen heroes and soldiers alike have been risen from the dead and they now have glowing red eyes, which means they're under John's control. The Red Women use Danny's blood to give John's followers flaming swords as well as give themselves the ability to launch fireballs at the Night King soldiers. Tyrion sees that the ice around Rhaegal has melted and he has one of the Red Women resurrect Rhaegal. Once Rhaegal is alive, Tyrion hops on him and rides the dragon, burning scores of whites. During this time, Danny's army is still in River Run mourning her death. Beric realizes that he has been spared for this very moment. He goes over to Danny and gives her the kiss of life, transferring his life into her body as he dies. Danny grabs a sword and leads her army out into the fight. We see the scene of the surviving Dothraki and Knights of the Vale charging from the south, and they're being followed by 3,000 soldiers of the Old Town Defenders. We also see fire arrows attacking the Night King from the east, which signals the Hound and Arya's arrival. The Hound sees fire, closes his eyes, and we see a flashback scene of Beric teaching the Hound about the Lord of the Light and conquering his fears. We come back to the present where the Hound is asking the Lord of the Light to give him the power to serve. Now the Hound opens his eyes and he has a flaming sword. The Hound leads the Lannister and Golden Company forces into battle. The Hound and Arya, who still disguises Cersei at this time, battle the White Walkers. The Hound spots the Night King and they have their own individual battle. The Hound was able to stab the Night King, which causes his sword to shatter in a thousand pieces. The Night King then stabs the Hound in the chest, killing him instantly. Arya sees this and goes into a frenzy, trying to attack the Night King from behind, but he grabs her. Jon spots this and yells for the Night King. The Night King throws Arya down and we finally have our much awaited showdown. The battle between Jon and the Night King is epic, lasting over 5 minutes. Jon is able to get the upper hand and stab the Night King with Lightbringer. The Night King shatters into many ice crystals, but the crystals float around the, in the air for a few seconds before they attach to Jon. Jon slowly turns into the new Night King. All of the fire whites that were following Jon into battle suddenly collapse. The original Night Walker's whites stop fighting and immediately stare at Jon. Jon stares at everyone in shame, as he has become the very thing he fought to defeat. Jon walks over to a dead ghost, resurrects him, mounts a horse, and leaves River Run with the remaining 3,000 white walkers and whites without further incident. The night suddenly becomes day and the battle is over. We see Danny grieving over a dead Sejora. When Danny is told about what happened to John, she is emotionless, stating that now there's nothing in our way to becoming queen. The ships that arrived at River Run were not from the Iron Fleet. 
They were ships belonging to Salador San, the pirate and friend of Sir Davos that helped them in the Battle of the Blackwater. Varys sent a letter to him prior to leaving Winterfell for assistance in the war, for the right price of course. Sunday was also missing during the battle because she escaped River Run following Varys' execution. We get a flashback scene of Varys, Sansa, and Missandei during the Battle of Winterfell. Varys is talking about the possibility of Jon being a better ruler than Danny. Missandei wants no parts of the conversation, but Varys tells Missandei that Danny will never let her go back to Essos. She will keep her under her thumb. After Missandei accepts the truth about Danny, we see her on a boat in River Run, leaving with a bag of gold that Varys gave her. At the end of the battle, Sir Davos meets up with Salador San, and Sir Davos agrees to leave with him. Arya, still disguised as Cersei, gives control of the surviving Lannister and Golden Company soldiers over to Tyrion, before disappearing and taking off her mask. Arya is informed that Gendry was killed by Melisandre, and then Arya decides to kill Melisandre with a bow and arrow after learning about the death. The Hound is resurrected by Kinvara, who tells the Hound that the Lord of Light has bigger plans for him. The episode ends with Danny taking what remains of her army with the Red Women to King's Landing. Tyrion advises against it, to which she refuses to listen to his advice, and he hands her the Hand of the Queen pin back to her. The Hound leaves with the Red Women and tells Arya to take care of herself. There's an end credit scene with Jon and the Army of the Dead arriving at Castle Black and going beyond the Wall. They are greeted by the White Walker who took Baby Sam from the Battle of Winterfell in Episode 6. Baby Sam appears to be declining in health, and the only person that can save him is John. John takes Baby Sam, puts his hand on Baby Sam's face, and turns Baby Sam into a White Walker. Well folks, that's the end of this video. Leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to reply to it. Episode 9 of the series will cover the immediate aftermath of the Long Night, as well as the details behind Varys' plan for Westeros. Until next time, stay tuned and stay safe. Peace.